343 recently did a live stream showcasing BTB gameplay for the first time, and it was really awesome to watch. The developers even provided some really insightful commentary, but in this video, I want to point out 13 things that you might have missed and 343 didn't talk about within the live stream as well. So if you want to know more about Halo Infinite's BTB, we'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So there are some interesting changes that are not traditional to Halo. One, we have how flag changes mid-match when it comes to flag capping locations, how vehicle spawns work with pelicans, as well as a new stealth mechanic for flag captures within Halo Infinite. So let's just get right into the details here. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of go through the gameplay in chronological order and kind of point out things that we see along the way that I think we might have missed. Initially, right here, I want to point out that it looks like with the name plates that we saw like in the previous flight, where have some kind of like emblem thing that's right behind the name tag as well which looks like a new addition this might be some additional customization or it might be some kind of play off of your emblem selection we'll have to wait and see how that actually plays out within the game once we get the chance to play around with the flight but that's a great start another thing to take a look at is there are also going to be these pads as well just like weapons we're going to be seeing it also for vehicles as well so you guys will have a better chance to understand if a vehicle's in use when the vehicle's going to spawn up and also what kind of vehicle spawn up on the map as well. Next I want to bring up is the flag location as it does look like it's going to be changing throughout the match of a CTF game in BTB. It's not like classic Halo where it stays in one spot. Right here you can see this is the first location. It's rather open, easy access and easy to kind of take away. So it's to kind of, kind of get the game mo moving kind of thing. I think that's kind of the big issue with BTB because oftentimes BTB games can be a bit of a drag and kind of go on and be kind of more like extended Slayer matches because it's so hard to grab those flags. Well, at least in this kind of system, it looks like it's going to be moving around. And as you cap their flags, their flag will actually move to more difficult locations to grab, which will kind of give the enemy team a little bit of a chance to come back and also not give you such a huge advantage to kind of keep things a little more even, and a little more playable and less uh, landslide-like. I also want to point out with this section, it seems like when the player moves quickly with the flag, it's revealed. As you can see, when they're picking up the flag, they're walking, nothing showcasing on their screen that they're revealed. But once they jump on the mongoose, reach a certain type of speed, it says revealed on on their screen. So my guess is that there would be some kind of icon popping up on your screen saying like, hey, your flag is moving away this way, go stop it kind of thing. Uh, we'll point this out later on in the video as well as it kind of showcases that like, it looks like with sprinting with the flag, you'll be showing up on the screen. And also when you're in a vehicle, it'll be showing up on screen. But if you're walking with the flag, it looks like you will not be popping up on the enemy's HUD saying like, hey, go stop them. Also in this section, we get to see our first Pelican drop come in as well. Now it seems like very odd time coming around like 12.45 with left in the match is when the first Pelican drop comes in. It drops in what looks to be a ghost as well. So it seems like it'd be kind of starting off small with these vehicles and wrapping up to something larger. But they mentioned within the development update that we would have up to like air vehicles and tanks dropping in as well. This could be map specific, but it seems like there wasn't really much of an escalation of vehicle drops like they mentioned within the development update. Next, I want to showcase the differences of amount of equipment that you receive on B2B compared to the 4v4 matches that they did say in the blog that you will get more items actually in B2B. And if you see right there, as you pick up the drop wall, you have three uses, which is actually the same that we had with the 4v4 maps. But we do see later on with the grapple shot, you actually get five uses within that as well. Obviously, things like this are subject to change, but it's interesting to know that like some items you actually will receive the same as you do in 4v4 matches, but sometimes you'll actually receive more of those items in BTB because you know the larger scale and more chances to use it would just make sense. Here's an example of a showcase and so a blue team has scored one flag and you can see now that the flag's actually been moved down to the bottom of the base on fragmentation here. So a little bit more difficult of a location to grab the flag out of. So it seems like that's kind of like a way to kind of balance out the match in a way. So then it's not so one-sided matches or one team that could really just run away with the whole thing. Another thing to showcase is when the player here utilizes overshield, you see right now that when they use overshield that their char character is actually covered in a white coloring because they actually mentioned this when the outcomes of the last technical preview that they wanted to make the distinction of when someone has overshield very different as you can clearly see they are colored in white where in the previous flight their team color was just more enhanced so i think it just makes it a little bit more obvious that yes this player does have overshield Here's an example I was talking about with the flag running right here as he picks up the flag, not revealed to the enemy team, starts sprinting, then revealed to the enemy team, which is very important. Now take a look in the lower right hand corner where he picks up the scrapple shot, 
five uses right there but you cannot use the grapple shot with the flag which i think it's a very important balance to make right there to make sure players have to really actually have to go through the map rather than just zooming around the whole thing very important distinction right there that they made and also again like with the arena maps with 4v4 maps that with the grapple shot you had three uses but in btb it looks like you'll be having five Continuing on showing details of the flag, look what happens right here. As soon as they cap the flag, look where it spawns. Now it's on top of the base now for the third and final capture location. So it does seem like it just kind of progressively gets more difficult for the winning team to keep capping flags. And look, as soon as he grabs the flag, it jumps to the man cannon, then revealed as well. So it's just kind of, I think it's kind of, kind of more of a speed total. And as they stop sprinting, you can see not revealed, start sprinting again, revealed on the enemy screen again. So it just kind of plays off that dynamic of when you should sprint, when you should not sprint with the flag should you be more stealthy with it should you just go you know full on full speed as fast as you can there's a little bit more play to it because people were worried about the flag uh, being able to sprint with it and also not having to flag them as well as it looks like it in this game. So very important differences I wanted to point out within this video. And here you can see that the blue team's flag is still in the first position so it hasn't moved around or they're not moving together in separate locations. It kind of depends on the enemy team how often they capture your flag when your flag moves around. And you can see here once the red team does capture the blue flag it does actually teleport the location of the flag from where it was originally to now underneath the base so it kind of mirrors what the other team's flag does it doesn't do different locations as you can see in this death screen the flag's not in its original location now with four and a half minutes left in the game that's when our next pelican drop comes in now i can't tell if these are static spawns or if these are going to be dynamic spawns depending on what vehicles are on the map at what time kind of thing or maybe it's dynamic and who's leading the kills and who's leading the flag caps and stuff like that maybe the enemy team might get a much stronger vehicle to kind of bring them back i'm not totally sure on this again once we actually get a chance to play this I'll be able to break it down in a little bit more detail here, but uh, I was trying to see if there's any kind of pattern with it. There was no indication within the kill feed whenever a vehicle spawn would come in. There was no call out from a Greena or your AI letting you know that, hey, a new drop is coming in as well. Uh, so this, this does need a little bit more looking into once the flight does drop, guys, to figure out what's going on with these Pelican drops. This next section showcases a segment that I figured was going to be part of Halo Infinite. If you guys remember from the last flight that they had an end screen screen showcasing like players standing still but here as you can see different positions are available now for kind of a victory pose kind of thing I mean I assume that was going to happen but uh, this is the first time I actually get a chance to see it so we might actually have to have a little bit of extra customization with this flight as well if you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from me recently check out the videos on the screen right here I got a playlist to all my Halo news and informational videos if you missed any content from me recently thank you so much for watching greatly appreciate it I'll catch you on the next one peace out